Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Made. I'm your host, Jackie Hansel, and with me this in this week's episode is Chase Pearson. He is a media producer and photographer, and a long time he has a long time background in television and media. So, welcome, Chase. Thanks, we- Jackie. <laughs> we are talking about the series Veep, season one, episode two, Frozen Yogurt. And I'm very happy Chase chose this. I haven't gotten too far into the series, but I absolutely love it. It's hysterical, and I have never watched it. So, all right. So, we'll get into the series synopsis first. It's from Wikipedia. Um, let me get down to the spot here. Okay. So, this series follows the personal life and political career of Selena. Meyer, who's played by Julia Louis Dreyfus, vice president and later president of the United States. Her party affiliation is never discussed. Formerly a United States senator from Maryland, Meyer campaigns for her party's nomination in the 2012 presidential election and is initially the front runner, but ultimately loses the nomination to Stuart Hughes. Meyer subsequently joins the Hughes ticket as his running mate and is elected vice president. Her staff as vice president, upon whom Meyer is almost totally reliant, includes chief of staff Amy Bruckheimer, who's played by Anna, is it, I don't know if it's Klumsky or Chlumsky, probably (laughs) Klumsky. (laughs) Director of communications, Mike McClintock, played by Matt Walsh. Deputy director of communications, Dan Egan, who's played by Reed Scott. Body man, Gary Walsh, played by Tony Hale. And personal secretary, Sue Wilson, I think it's Sufi Bradshaw is her name. Uh, later additions to her team as president include White House Chief of Staff Ben Cafferty, who's played by Kevin Dunn, and political strategist Kent Davison, who's played by Gary Cole. Jonah Ryan, played by Timothy S- S- Simons, initially a White House liaison to the vice president's office and later a New Hampshire congressman, also features prominently. Meyer frequently finds herself relegated and ignored by Hughes, who is never depicted on screen at the outset of the series. In the second season, Meyer comes to accrue some power and influence, and by the end of the season is actively considering challenging Hughes for their party's nomination in the 2016 election. This becomes a moot point when Hughes abruptly resigns due to his wife's poor mental health and Meyer becomes president. Meyer begins her presidential campaign at the end of the third season. The fourth season finds her adjusting to her new role while continuing her presidential campaign both of which are undermined by a series of scandals. Wow, this is long. (laughs) 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 Uh, The election results in a tie between Meyer and challenger Bill (laughs) O'Brien, played by Brad Leland, leading to a contingent election in the House of Representatives during the fifth season to decide the next president after a recount in Nevada fails to alter the election's outcome. (laughs) The House vote ends in a tie, meaning that when the Senate votes to elect the vice president, the winner will be the next president. The Senate vote also ends in a tie. Myers, see, I haven't seen all this. Myers disgruntled vice president, Andrew Doyle, played by Phil Reeves, who did not run for a full term, cast the tie-breaking vote for O'Brien's running mate, Laura Montez, played by Andrea Savage, instead of Myers running mate, Tom James, played by Hugh Laurie, leading to Montez becoming president. The sixth season follows Meyer out of office for the first time in the series as she attempts to ensure her legacy by authoring a memoir, setting up a foundation, and attempting to establish a presidential library. At the end of the season, Meyer decides to run for president again. The seventh season sees Meyer attempting to run for president once again in the 2020 election, featuring her former political rivals, Ryan and James, as major competitors, in addition to introducing the young, likable, and progressive challenger, Kemi Talbot, um, played by Tox Olin. Oh my gosh, Ola Gundoy. (laughs) The series also explores Meyer's personal life, such as her strained relationship with her daughter, Catherine, played by Sarah Sutherland, ex-husband Andrew, played by David Pascassi, I am butchering these names, and several significant others. The lives, careers, and relationships of the other characters are also explored, frequently intersecting with the series' principal narrative, satirizing the political activities and inner workings of the contemporary U.S. government. Okay. (laughs) See, I didn't know all that, but I, I'll still watch it. Um, <laughs> <all right. laughs> For the episode recap, this is from HBO.com. And I like that frozen yo- yogurt is spelled with an H after the G, um, mm-hmm. which they mentioned in the episode too. Old fashioned. So while, right? Yes. <laughs> while Veep Chief of Staff Amy meets with ailing Senator Doyle aide Eric about his hard-ass boss sponsoring the filibuster reform bill, there's news from the White House that Selena's Clean Jobs Task Force is likely to be greenlit. 
As Eric is leaving, Selena does a brush by in the hall, shaking the sick aide's hand as Amy confirms the Veep's filibuster reform bill meeting with Senator Doyle later in the day. Gary squeezes out hand sanitizer for Selena after the goodbyes. With the president in South Africa, Selena wants to seize the agenda and roll out Dan's idea for the new two-point me version of Selena Meyer, vice president. The Veep schedule frees up as people cancel meetings because of their debilitating flu symptoms. The team decides to meet, quote, some regular normal, quote, folks, with an impromptu PR event at a local frozen yogurt shop owned by three generations of African-Americans. Selena wants to arrive at the filibuster reform meeting early to make others think they're late. (laughs) Amy's worried that Senator Doyle might get cold feet and decide not to support the bill. Gary takes issues with Dan's emasculating jibes. Dan questions (laughs) Gary's willingness to protect the Veep at all costs, like the agents of the Secret Service would. Dan encourages Selena to try out their new strategy. After the Doyle meeting, they'll do a 10-minute meetup with Leon West to start the rollout of Two Point Me. Selena has taken on Amy's worries about Senator Doyle. He can be a real hog effer. (laughs) Sure enough, he turns out to be a stickler for playing by the book. Madam Vice President tries to lighten the mood, but before Doyle can lay out his demands in exchange for his support, Gary dives onto the table, blocking the beep from taking a direct hit from Eric Snee's, quote, bullet. Senator Doyle apologizes for his aide, confident, confident she's got Doyle where she wants him. Selena sends Amy back to the office to drum up more Senate support for the reform bill. Back at the office, Senator Murray's office says no to Amy on reform. Dan and Mike work on the perfect frozen yogurt flavor for the Veep to eat. Oh. Gary's flush with pride about his selfless heroism, catching the, quote, dirty bomb right in the face. Senator Doyle wants Selena to keep the oil guys off the clean jobs task force in exchange for his sponsorship of the reform bill. Then he commands her to hand him his coffee. (laughs) Selena returns to her office, trying to put a positive spin on her promise to Senator Doyle, knowing she's already agreed to put an oil guy in the task force. She wants her team to find a way to unsay what she said. (laughs) Dan suggests putting an ex-oil guy on the task force. When Jonah arrives, everyone uses frozen yogurt flavors as code for what Selena must do about the clean jobs problem. They go with Jamaica rum. Oil. Oh, Jamaica rum. Oil is in. The journalist Leon West, a.k.a. the Beltway Butcher, accompanies Dan to the yogurt shop. Gary succumbs to the flu. Mike gets word that the president wants to announce the clean jobs task force himself upon his return from South Africa. Knowing Dan is planning to leak word of the task force to Leon West as part of his Veep 2 point thing, Selena sends Mike down to the yogurt shop to stop Dan. The shop owner and his family are so excited to have the Veep coming, they have named a flavor after her, Strawberry Selena. A skeptical Leon West wants to hear what Dan has. Dan promises that things are about to get Veep-tastic just as Mike shows up to warn Dan. Jonah rushes in to tell Selena the president is suffering from chest pains and they must get to the West Wing immediately. Selena, Amy, Jonah, a cadre of Secret Service I hope I said that right, agents and a severely ailing Gary make a mad dash for White House Situation Room. Jonah's attitude dramatically changes as he rushes to make sure the Veep has everything she needs. Selena is asked if she can cover a POTUS meeting with the defense secretary and General Marsh of the Pentagon. Meanwhile, the yogurt shop owner, his family, and Leon are losing their patience with the Veep's no-show. Mike gets a call from Amy. Sue calls Dan to let him know about the president's heart attack and swears him to secrecy. Dan is about to give Leon West the scoop of the sentry when Mike cuts him off. The Veep is heading down for a scoop of Jamaica... Jamaican rum with sprinkles. Leon walks out, promising to make Dan's life 80% more difficult. Just as Selena starts to get comfortable, she learns that the president is fine. He had heartburn after (laughs) after the state barbecue. Jonah relays a message from Mike. Selena is needed at the yogurt store for damage control. Hours late, Selena arrives, but the flu has caught up to her. Amy insists the Veep make good on her visit to the shop. After a few small bits of yogurt and with the owner's 80-year-old mother in the bathroom, the Veep team hurries out as Selena promises to reduce taxes. (laughs) The Veep barely gets to the limo before her gastric mishap. She pleads with her loyal team not to ride with her. Amy and Dan check their gag reflexes. Mike decides to walk. Okay. (laughs) All right. Uh, They didn't didn't leave a whole lot out. (laughs) No. That's like my notes, actually. (laughs) Shorter one. Um, I get, why don't we start with why you picked, first of all, why you picked the series. Because I okay. picked the episode. So why you picked the series? <laughs> it's just one of my favorites. I mean, yeah. you know, just when you're reading the, I mean, there's a reason that synopsis is so long and the character yeah. list is so long. It's a very complicated, <laughs> involved show that yeah. is very clever. And yes. so that's what I like about it. And yeah. there's um, a lot of moving pieces and yeah. it 
and just the even the names that they came up with for the characters, Mike McClintock. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. it's just un, un um, uh, what's her name? Uh, Bruckheimer, Amy Bruckheimer. Amy Bruckheimer. Yeah. Also, yeah. also known as Selena calls her autistic Barbie at some point in the. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's, it is, it's, it's so funny. It, this is interesting because, well, I, and I picked the frozen yogurt. I mean, I'll be honest, I hadn't watched a lot, but I, that one, mm. I kept thinking about that one. I just, first of all, I think I have a weird thing with when people gag, I think it's hysterical. And like, <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me because I don't want to be around them in person, but on movies yeah. and shows when they yeah. start like Tony Hale's like, oh, oh, like every time I was dying. <laughs> I, I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm sick, but I also, I loved when she thought she was going to be president. Yeah, I just love that whole thing because she was like, oh, I hope he's okay. And she like, <laughs> and you're like, yeah, this is probably like, I just never thought, I hate to say it. I never thought about it. I'm like, oh my God, this would totally happen in real life. And then when she found out yeah. he was okay, she was like, thank God, or whatever she said. I don't know. <laughs> I just, I thought that was such a good. Well, the whole, I mean, the whole show, she's, she's kind of fake with everybody, you know? Yeah. And that's just the nature of Washington. That's kind of the, yes. the, the satire of that show is that it's all a bunch of lies and bullshit. And just people just trying subtext. to get something. Yeah. yeah. Like I need this, but uh, to make it look good, like uh, everything. Yeah. It's like, Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> so I found out, I don't know if you knew this because I was like, you Ooh. know what? They probably improvise on this show. Yes. Listen to this from backstage.com. <laughs> this is even <laughs> better than I thought. It says that this was an article interview with, um, uh, the guy who plays Dan, I think his name is Reed, mm -hmm. Reed Scott. He's really hot, but he's a jerk, by the way. <laughs> Michelle, mm -hmm. Michelle. Um, <laughs> I just want to take, it's basically they'd have these long rehearsal processes where it says where we would improvise everything and the writers would go away to rewrite the script to incorporate their improv. I was like, whoa, that's, that's cool. amazing. And I could see that yeah. in a way, but you, it's even better knowing that. That they basically like wrote the show. <laughs> That's cool. Way. I didn't even I didn't even know that. I I just knew that it had that a very authentic flow mm -hmm. to the dialogue. Yeah. Which I think that might explain some of that, you know. Yeah. You're getting you're getting the, the inspiration for the lines are coming from yeah. the actors and their characters. Yeah. That's and it makes every, cool. like and some of the lines I quoted, like they it makes them even better because I'm like, oh they totally yeah. they came up with it. Just the way <laughs> the way they flow and like throw in these comments, I was like, this feels like improv to me because I yeah. have taken improv. Not that, <laughs> not that, anyway, yeah, I'm not a real expert. Um, I have to say, I I mean, who doesn't? But I love Julia Louis Dreyfus. Like, there's just yeah, she's, she's the best. So, she's she's but she's she's so well put together. She's so graceful. Like, no, she's doing comedy, but she's so graceful and. Mm -hmm are like attractive and there's just like this cleanness about her always. I don't know. Um, She's one of the best, you know, and yeah. I, uh, it's really shown over the last, you know, after yeah. what she's done with herself after Seinfeld. She's after really, Seinfeld. You know, I know. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and then just like, basically it was like really hot and they, do they not have AC? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think they ever said it was broken or something. And I was like, why don't they have, do they not have AC where the vice president is? Because she's the vice president. I think they said that in the first scene, but then say? like, it didn't really become an issue. Like, no, I mean, like, there's, I don't know. It was just I like have one a, line. I have a favorite quote. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a favorite quote regarding that. Oh, yeah. Um, well, thing, but that? yeah, I'll, I'll get into that. I'll get into it in a second. Um, okay. The whole, also the whole thing with this flu going around and this was pre COVID. And yeah. I was like, oh my God. I mean, like that guy sneezing and like the Eric guy, the first guy, uh, I was like, yeah. oh my, no, like you're a grown adult. This is disgusting. And he did it <laughs> twice. And she shook, she shook his hand twice. Man, I know. <laughs> oh my God. And the hand sanitizer, like, and it was, yeah, it was, it was so I mean, He was on it with the hand sanitizer. That made me feel a little better. Cause <laughs> like, okay. She's like, she's, she's really on top of this, but I guess he got sick. It must've got stuck to him. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's when he got the, uh, yeah, the, the, the bullet. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Um, and this is just another thing. So her dress throughout the episode, I loved it and I had to look for it. And I'm so happy because I love this website. It's called shopyourtv.com and uh -huh. they have a Facebook okay. group and they have, um, they're on Instagram too, but their Facebook group, I don't know who this one, uh, mod I think she's a moderator on it or an admin or whatever. You basically post a picture of an outfit, earrings, it doesn't matter, jewelry, whatever you say what season, what episode, what show it's from. Um, and she gets back to you like this. Now, this was older, so I knew, I was like, I don't know if they'll find it. She came back, I mean, I posted this very early in the morning, came back with definitely within a half an hour. And for those of you out there, I thought this was interesting too. So it was a black dress. It was like a sheath dress. Um, she said, she goes, I don't know if I found the exact one, but I found something similar. So um, hmm. I got, yeah, so she, props to them i love shop your tv and i'll put the That's link cool. so it's called it's black halo i think is the brand and it's called jackie <laughs> sheath dress now i know no it's not named after me um it's probably <laughs> named after like jack jacqueline kennedy or whatever but i was like oh, that's so cool anyway I just threw that in there um <laughs> i have a speech that's all just like side note here so so I'm a speech pathologist in a school. I deal with, you know, language, articulation, all that type of stuff. But I used to work in a hospital. So a big part of that was swallowing. Um, people will get, have trouble swallowing, chewing. Basically, it's the swallowing. And, and when, especially when they have a stroke, it's a risk to get, that they could get pneumonia because they aspirate mm -hmm. and all this stuff, right? So I just, of course, I got stuck on this. So when Selena tells Eric to drink plenty of liquids. And then she says something like, well, that's kind of a stupid thing to say because you can't drink a solid. And then Amy says soup. So, and then um, <laughs> I think it's uh, Gary, the Tony Hale. Mm -hmm. He was like, mm -hmm. well, it's a solid and a liquid. Well, it's really funny. So uh, mm -hmm. no one's going <laughs> to care about this except for like speech pathologists. But basically it's a mixture of solids and liquid. And so is cereal, but then cereal at least gets mushy. The hardest, it's the hardest thing to eat when you have a swallowing disorder because you have to be able to do both. You have to be able to chew the salad, hold uh, it in your mouth while you drink the liquid. I know this is so dopey, but basically I got stuck on that one. Because uh, <laughs> so so some people, when they have a stroke, they can't ever have, they can't have at least for a while liquids. They have to, everything has to be thickened. Mm -hmm. And they can't drink like water, you know, everything has to be thickened, 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 or um, things have to be mush, basically. It, it was terrible. Anyway, mm -hmm. um, so I have to make it up. Mike's <laughs> perspiration was hysterical. Um, you know, he was drenched in sweat. And he's like, this is me. I have big pores or gland. I don't know what he says. Um, <laughs> okay. Here's the best <laughs> line ever. Selena. Selena's hot. And. Gary is like blowing this little fan on her. And uh -huh. she's like, Dan, can you get more oxygen in here, please? This thing is completely useless. And she's talking about the fan. I can uh -huh. move more air by <laughs> she goes, I can move more air by farting. <laughs> Gary says <laughs> and Gary says, I'm sure you can, ma'am. Like I don't know. I'm 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 like a you know, eight year old boy basically. So uh, I so love it when he, he he says stuff like that, and then she gives him yeah. a look like you're yeah. an idiot. Like, I don't... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, also, like you didn't expect that to come out of her mouth, kind of too. Yeah, like, you're just like, well, what? she's get get used to it because that's yeah. her character. No, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, some of the th oh my god, so yeah, some of the things she said. Um, the whole like vice president president relationship, like she hates him. Like, I, it's just it's just funny. Um, <laughs> Oh, and then when they're deciding which, quote, normal thing to do, they uh -huh. mention a book fair. And Amy's like, well, you know, there'll, there'll be kids there. And Mike's like, kids are unpredictable. They wet their pants. I mean, that's when I was yeah. like, they have to improvise this because it's just like yeah, yeah. things thrown out there. I'm like, all yeah. kids wet their pants. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, when she's told. Yeah, that's the part. Like when she's told the president has experienced <laughs> chest pains, she's trying not to smile. And then her disappointment. So those are. Those are my notes. Um, so segue into, I guess, how did you start totally off the you know subject there? But how did you start doing what you do? 
and I guess when. Um, <laughs> okay, so I started um, being interested in telling stories through the television media, like in the late 90s when I was driving a tow truck. But I didn't really mm-hmm. know how to get, you know, into the TV business. Mm-hmm. So um, anyway, I, I, uh, at some point I started, I volunteered at a network um, mm. called Free Speech TV. And I mm-hmm. was like, just kind of like an intern or whatever. But I got to kind of like, learn a little bit. And um, mm-hmm. they didn't do production, they just did licensing of content. Um, so they, mm-hmm. they ran a lot of like, kind of left wing documentaries. And uh, they wanted to do some live programming around the two, year 2000 presidential elections. And the CEO was just like, Chase, can you like look into what it would take to get a TV truck and, you know, put on some live production. So I just kind of had a little research assignment and I figured it out and we put on the production and went off good. And so that kind of started my career. Wow. Where, where was this? Um, where was it located? We did, um, well, the Democratic National Convention that year was in Los Angeles. Um, but where, yeah, and- where was the free speech um, oh, the you know, the, the networks the network, networks yeah. base was in Boulder, Colorado. Oh, okay. And then they, and that that was the, you know, during that uh, programming we did for the election coverage, we debuted uh, Democracy Now, the radio show Democracy Now, mm-hmm. uh, as a television show, and mm-hmm. um, and then after those those productions, I got kind of sent to New York to help turn democracy now into a, a, a television show and that mm. was um in the year 2001 and um we ended up turning it into a tv show the day after september 11th um oh, wow. like about six months ahead of schedule oh wow wow and you were living in boulder at the time no i'd come back to new york um we were okay. we just no. we were we were Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm sorry, keep going. <laughs> oh, we just had that's where Isa was born, was in Boulder. Right. And oh, um, okay. And then because we just, you know, couldn't decide where to go when Johanna was pregnant and we ended up mm-hmm. just like throwing a dart at a map and ended up in Boulder. Oh, okay. Oh, and then, okay. And then we came back to New York after like doing a year of that. So but yeah. it, it worked out it worked out good because I got that whole that's Yeah. Why I, that you know met free speech tv and whatnot yeah and, huh? where did you grow up uh i moved around quite a bit you know okay. a lot of different states but my kind of formidable years i guess were in the berkshires so from oh, okay from second grade uh till the end of seventh grade i was in in the berkshires in sheffield okay but, and where did you graduate like, yeah. I um I graduated from a school in uh, Virginia called Blue oh, Ridge wow. School. Oh wow. And uh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> um I guess then that was my next question. So what brought you to the Hudson Valley? Well, so that was, you know, that was like my, you know, growing up, but then yeah. after high school i came back to the hudson valley i went to skidmore and then i've um and then you know i would say the vast majority of my life i've lived within an hour of the albany airport i've thought about that before and that's (laughs) i think true oh yeah Yeah. okay i thought it was college that brought you to the area so what i was going to ask you was i mean this you like you know doing the 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 film and everything and this, and you feel like, I mean, it sounds like this is your passion. Um, like what exactly drives you, I guess, with, with all this. Um, I, think. I don't know. I kind of have like a personality where I like adventure. I like challenges. Mm-hmm. I like problem solving <laughs> and mm-hmm. you know, the, the TV world kind of has, can have a lot of those things involved in it. And, um, uh, <laughs> especially when you're doing, you know, like kind of independent media stuff, which I've done a lot of very indie type stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, And, um, 
and you have to be very resourceful and whatnot when you when you do that. So there's always, you know, it's a, a dr- adrenaline junkies like it, <laughs> and mm-hmm. and also people who like to solve problems and get yeah. make things and get things done. And yeah. um, so, I mean, that's I think what's attractive, you know, to the to me about the industry. Uh, or kind of what got me interested in it, but over mm-hmm. time I've done a lot of different things, and so I've kind of I've enjoyed focusing on different aspects of the of the industry. You know, I used to do a mm-hmm. lot more production stuff. You know, I was a mm-hmm. shooter and an editor, and and then I did a lot of like directing, um, mm-hmm. and then um, and then I started doing more like producing, and then I kind of became an executive, mm-hmm. and all of those things are very different. And so now I'm kind of doing, now I'm actually kind of doing, working as a creative director, mm-hmm. which is another totally different thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's all. That's great though. You know, you keep, keep moving, you know, you're not stagnant. You keep changing it up yeah. and, and learning new things. And with the, shooting and everything like using the camera and stuff and obviously a photographer was that self-taught or how did you learn to yeah. to do that it wow. was yeah pretty much all self-taught i did take a broadcast tv course at a uh, mm-hmm. local the local public access station in boulder colorado mm-hmm. and that was like the first time i got like my mm-hmm. hands on like you know tv cameras and stuff but like we didn't have a lot of time with the cameras and then we learned to edit on reel to reel tape. So it was just before like Final Cut Pro and, you know, the right. next generation of um, nonlinear editors kind of really became accessible. Um, yeah. And so that was like when I, I, I only did one project. It was like my student project on reel to reel tapes. And then it became, everything became, uh, you know, digital nonlinear digital. editing at that point. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Um, in, in true Gen X fashion, straddling yeah. <laughs> the cusp of the old and the new. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm just, I can, I can obviously do video, but I, I'm not fancy. Um, so just the way you say fancy, fancy? <laughs> means, a, no. means a lot to me. <laughs> well, you've got that, you've got that great Hudson Valley accent, like the Saugerties kind of, you know, oh, I, totally. Totally. I, and I love it so much. And it's like when I moved away from the area when I was a kid, I missed that. And so I'm always <laughs> like, you know, it's always been comforting to me. <laughs> Sorgity. It's Sorgities, you know. Sorgities, yeah. There's an R in there. You just don't see it. <laughs> yeah. Sorgities, <laughs> yeah. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> um, have you, so I don't think so, but have you ever dabbled in like theater or acting or improv? Well, it's funny you should ask. That's been something I've been thinking about recently and kind of having like, you know, if I had to do it over again, I wish I would got more into theater when I was young. Mm. Because it turns out I like hanging out with like theater people. I didn't know. I was always like pushed into like sports and math and stuff. And turns out like I could have been smoking pot with the theater kids, you know? (laughs) um you could i mean you can still take classes or whatever you know (laughs) oh i know it's just well yeah it's because i don't really um i don't really feel the need to be to be on stage i like i i I just thought it was interesting that there was an opportunity (laughs) no just production just in general like to get into like uh you know, that's kind of like the gateway to the entertainment business for a lot of people. Right. And I didn't know that back then. And yeah. I wish someone had told me that yeah, that mm-hmm. was like, kind of like, like, I didn't get a lot of information about like, you know, big picture strategy when I was growing up. Right. Right. But you, yeah, but you, I mean, obviously you accomplished a lot and you're really like really self-made. You basically taught yourself everything. That's amazing um I was say, uh, you know my dave actually has taken stand-up classes recently oh recently oh, yeah. did he tell you did i tell you that well i know he's been working on um his stand-up stuff i've 
Yeah, I've, uh, yeah he probably he's, did he's, he's, he's run lines on me before. <laughs> God. Anyway, but I think what it is is just you know, like you get. I'm getting to a certain age, and and just I think we're close in age, and just that mm -hmm. I can still try new things. In fact, if I didn't, oh, yeah. I'd be probably miserable. <laughs> Absolutely. You know. Yeah. I know. Well, I um, love it. You because you know. The fact that you're doing these podcasts, I think, is so great. Um, I'm a huge fan, and I think, I think it's awesome. I'm, I'm trying to encourage you. everyone, you know, to like yeah. do more because I think it's fun. So it is. You, it's you a know, lot of fun. I'm learning new I'm things. Glad you, yeah. glad you did it. <laughs> proud. <laughs> <laughs> I am proud. Um, I have. Uh, Why well, don't do you want to talk about your photography? I think okay. that. Um, I have a feeling, well, you have something coming up. This might be published after that, though. I'm not sure. Okay. Because now I can't remember. Well, that's, that's, but anyway, talk about your photography. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I started taking pictures of houses around here like five or six years ago to um, for money, right? There was like a... Uh, a real estate boom here and mm -hmm. i i had taken a couple i photographed some houses for some people just kind of like as a favor or whatever and i was like i was like this is kind of cool i kind of like it and i was like oh people pay for this stuff all the time and so i started doing it and it ended up being you know um a good thing and, and became I st i've shot i've shot thousands of houses wow now, you know with like and, you um, external like drone shots internal like what yeah like um Everything. yeah like like all the stuff you need for a real estate listing real essentially estate. okay but i kind of you know was doing it at the higher end of the market and you know drawing on my background behind other types of cameras and whatnot and it did a good job and so my stuff started getting in the new york times and getting like you know i was kind of the guy um for 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 a few years, I think I was the guy to call in the Hudson Valley for the fanciest mm -hmm. house. Now, for fancy. There's, I think a, there's a lot. Yeah, I think there's a lot more competition. There's a lot, mm. you know, and so I've kind of, and I was, so for a while, I was kind of growing that business. And mm -hmm. it was very hard to, like, staff up and get the right thing. So I've I've since shrunk the business. I only mm -hmm. handle a few customers by my myself. And it's, like, it's the mm -hmm. same customers over and over again. Yeah. And it, it's good. And it's... um. So anyway, so in that process, that's why I started doing that. And I got, so I was out shooting every day. And then I started taking, um, I got, start, got the drone to take the aerial pictures of the houses and stuff. And then I just started shooting other stuff for the drone and other stuff for the other cameras. And I bought lights and strobes and stuff. I started doing fashion stuff. And I, then mm. I started doing a lot of landscape stuff. You've never seen my, have you ever seen my photography? No. no. But I'm oh. hoping to. I mean, I saw th some things you put on Instagram, but no. Right. So I'm looking forward so to anyway, that. So anyway, so I start, yeah. So now I'm it's kind cool. of like, I've been getting into, I've been trying to transition into doing art as like a thing, mm -hmm. you know, to make money. And, nice. um, and focus on that. So I've got like our first real gallery show coming yes. up in a uh, weekend on the well, depending on when this releases. next weekend, right? So, yeah, um, and uh, <clears throat> and I'm excited about it. And so it's been a, it's been a very long, you know, challenging process to like mm -hmm. learn all this stuff, and you know, while doing like ten other things at the same time. Yeah, and okay. um, and hoping I'm doing it right, but I'm like also very self taught. You know what I mean? So when you're yeah. when you're self taught, there's sometimes like you know, gaps in your knowledge about certain things. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, right. Yeah. You figured out how to do most of it, but like, <laughs> there's like this one thing that like, maybe someone should have told you, like if you <laughs> gone to school for it, they probably would have, but like, right. I don't, I don't know that, you know, <laughs> so that happens every now and again. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're having a show, right? So I don't know yeah. if that sounds like you're doing something right. And yeah, but I don't have these stuff printed yet. Okay. 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 And it was supposed to. It was supposed to get installed the other day. So. 
All right. It'll happen. It'll happen. I know. We can do a virtual I one. No, I don't. <laughs> well, now, you know, it will happen. I've, you know, that's the no. one thing about me is I, I always get it across the finish line. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just yeah. like a week out sometimes it might look a little scary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so talking about working so hard, you know, the long process, do you have, is there something, I, I, this term, I wish I had a different term for it, but do you have something that you do for self-care? Something where you just, I need to do this just to, whew, you know. Um, gummy bears. Yeah. Gummy bears? <laughs> yeah. Regular gummy bears? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, hey. that's like, that's like kind of like, it really is like a big mood elevator for me. I feel so mm -hmm. much better. Yeah. So that's like, you know, yeah. I think that's the most concise answer to that question. Cause that's... I'm usually working or, or making something. I'm always right. doing that. And there's not really, cause I like what I do and I don't really, I don't really right. have that like a work play yes. boundary you know what i mean i was thinking it's just always that. kind of the same i was thinking that yeah. as you were talking that i was like a lot of people need that self-care because they're so stressed out with work or whatever i mean not saying you don't get stressed out but you really it sounds like love what you do those are like that's a form yeah. of in a way self-care like you get fulfillment from it and then yeah so i was thinking that you that the same thing yeah. you just said so well yeah not I mean, getting stressed out and having stress are two different things right <laughs> true, true. Huh. um i'm also too sometimes you know the oh, i think the big thing is like when you get overwhelmed and you're just like i can't do anything because i'm so overwhelmed right now <laughs> so i yeah. just need to need to pause yeah um yeah yep. what is something you can't you can't leave the house without I, and I don't mean like phone, you know, the, the essentials, like just something you kind of always have to have on you or you feel like maybe a little weird. Is there anything? Well, I, I, I keep a lot of my equipment with me all the time. My camera equipment, okay. my drone and my scanners wow. and stuff. And so I have a, you know, I have a truck and I have, it's full of equipment. And cause I like to be ready to. In case there's something really. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Like I went to a music festival up in the Catskills this summer and it was like, kind of like one of those, like kind of like burning man people. Right. But it was like one of mm -hmm. the tribes that has their own little thing. Mm -hmm. And I realized I'd never been to like one of those burning man things before. And I saw that they were like, everyone's making the art projects and I was like, Oh, wow. cool. And so I just ran home cause it wasn't that it was just in Shandaken and grabbed okay. a whole TV studio worth of equipment and set up a TV <laughs> studio <laughs> outside <laughs> in, in, in wow. front of my RV. Yeah. So now you'll never leave home with that. <laughs> yeah. And <I'm, laughs> that's, exactly. that's really cool. Yeah. Like writers, a lot of times they have to have a pen and paper or something on. I mean, well, obviously they can type on their phone too, but like something on them, you know, for any moment. Um, what is I like having can... everything on me. Like that's why I bought a camper actually. Cause my, in my kind of like fantasy world, I'm either on mm -hmm. a boat or some kind of vessel and have all uh -huh. my things I need, which isn't much. I've, yeah. but I've got like the right thing of everything that I just need. And that's yep. it. That's like my, you always advice. have it with you. I was yeah. like, like a turtle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Just like so, turtles, kind of. Yeah. Just like turtles, they have you know. <laughs> <house on their. laughs> I don't know, and I didn't even have a gummy bear. Okay, um, <laughs> what is something you can't live without? Now you can. I said a very superficial answer once, but um, you could say something deep. You could say something. You could say food or whatever you want. What's something you mm -hmm. cannot live without? Well, hmm. Cannot live without. I mean, Loaded I dish. like. I'm kind of like old fashioned. When I like, I like. I mean, I like a lot of different types of food, but like when it comes down to like <laughs> a midnight snack, I'm like going peanut butter and jelly. Yeah, I said peanut butter, and then peanut I had butter, another yeah. guest that peanut, said peanut butter. Gotta have peanut yeah, butter. Peanut butter have yeah, to have peanut butter and whole milk. <laughs> 
Yeah. I mean, I've had people say like music, I can't live without music in my life. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you're so much deeper. Than that. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, but that's just the first thing that always comes to mind. And I have to have a supply. That's the problem. Yeah. If I have, like, I look on the shelf, I see two things of peanut butter. I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to go get more. <laughs> Dude, I went to I went to Walmart I... last night to get some. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, I did. There's something yeah. about peanut butter. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I mean, and the thing I can't leave the house without is like ibuprofen. I mean, it's not very significant, but if I mm. swear, if I leave it without, somebody gets a headache. There's some problem. <laughs> so I, <have> to... <laughs> <laughs> I do always get asked for that, like at work. Not always, like every day, but I'm the one they come to. Do you have an okay. Adele? I'm like, yes, I do. Anyway. All right. <laughs> um, I, think, <laughs> I think that's all I got. I don't know if you wanted to add yeah. anything. Um, no. I mean. I'll have all your info at the, you know, in the description where to find you. All, all right. right well, well, thank you, Jackie. Thank you. All right. Bye, everyone. All right. All right.